This is really cool. 100 of the greatest global thought leaders have come together to create one of the first ever 3D printed books in the world. The design and creation of this one, not an easy one, though. Okay, please welcome Chief Community and Development Officer for Genius 100, Helen Hatsis. Good morning, Helen. Good morning. This is a world exclusive, my friends. This was the very first 3D printed book Ever. Ever, absolutely. Wow, and it's heavy. It is heavy. I think it weighs uh, approximately five pounds. I saw you, you were struggling yeah, with it struggling. a little bit. Yeah, yeah. And this will be going on a world tour. It will be because uh, what we're doing with this book mm -hmm. is that, um, as you can see, um, there are vision statements included in this book. So we've um, collected a hundred, or we've invited a hundred people around the world who are, you know, these eminent individuals in their selected field and we've asked them to contribute to this book by sharing their vision of the future and now that it's been captured in this book we're traveling around the world and meeting them at various signing ceremonies so that they could sign the book and then it'll be auctioned off at Christie's uh, next June who are some next of the year who are some of the people in there and are there ones that stand out have you had a chance to actually read them yet I have I've actually read all of them because as they were coming in we were you know proofreading not that they needed any editing but we you know of course mm -hmm. we go through that process but they're, they're incredible. So there are many Canadians, um, such as the Kielberger brothers, so that they shared an essay together. Uh, Colonel Hatfield, Rick Hansen, David Suzuki, and um, there, there's also Maggie McDonnell, who was Global Teacher of the Year in 2017, and a slew others. And it's just been an exceptional project to work on. May I lift it up so we can yeah. see how so you are able to... Sure. Sure. Let this me is how serious we carve have to take out. It. Yeah. These aren't kid gloves. The no. likeness yeah. of... Here we go. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Okay. R Raj, those and, so, and so, what's the hope with this? What do you Robert What Einstein. do you want to see come from this? Well, you know, it's it's interesting that you ask that, and thank you for asking that, um, because we have, you know, contacted some of the most amazing people in the world um, to share their vision of the future. We want to inspire our current generation and future generations to come, and that's that's the, the whole point of it. This is incredible. I know. Isn't that amazing? Oh, my god! Absolutely. Gosh. And it's a 3D printer that did it, it right? Is a, yeah. And it takes five days to print this. So it's not like your traditional printing where, you know, you print, you know, the paper pages first, and then mm -hmm. you take it to another uh, segment, and then you, you bind it. This actually goes in. It's a file that goes in the printer, and then it comes out looking like that. And as the, um, the printing house said, it's like an archaeological revelation, yeah. and it truly is. Like five days to print that. How did you go about picking the visionaries? Another great question. Um, so we wanted to find people who've really made an impact in their industry, you know, around the world. And um, we had an international committee of individuals, and they all, so, you know, brought names forth. And then it was sort of this unanimous decision if this person should be included in this mm -hmm. book. And that's how we started. So it was vetted, and then, and then my job, which. I mean, it's one of the best jobs in the world, was that I had the opportunity once this person was selected that I had to go and present the idea to them and bring them on board as part of the community. And were there yeah. any, any hesitations by anybody? Did they all say yes? The only hesitation was, like, really, me? I mean, people are so humble, and they thought, no, I, I, like, I can't. Not me? Why me? And so that, that was pretty much it. But once they came on board and then you, you know, have a look at the essays, which will be eventually made public mm -hmm. in a 2D version, because these should be shared. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, it's been a, a remarkable ride so Is there far. one that stands, stands out to you, one of the essays? Yeah, Ridley Scott. Really? Ridley Scott, yeah. Um, because he, he, in his field, what I'm he is... I'm going to hand yeah, sure. back to we'll you right turns, now. It's so heavy. heavy. <laughs> That's too it much responsibility so for me. But he even starts his essay by saying, you know, you know to be considered a visionary. And he, he's so humbled by it. He doesn't... It's not that he doesn't take it seriously. He's really taken aback by it. And then he gives, you know, I... I I don't want to give away too much of it because I, I want you to read it for the first time and then get your own impression. But it's just so moving what he has mm. to say about just his, you know, his background in, in, in the arts and how he came to where he is today. And it's just, it's beautiful. And they're all like that. Congratulations. Thank this you is so much. This revolutionary as is the content mm -hmm. inside. For more information, visit Genius100Visions.com. We'll have the link on our website. Take good care of this thing as it yes. travels the globe. Yes, it's got <laughs> right its own case and everything. It's like the Stanley Cup. Oh, yeah. Travels with its own case and <laughs> exactly. everything. All right, let's head to Nicole. She had the live eye at the Battleshoe Museum.